Back in the day, the idea of a king being first and foremost a servant was unheard of. The only time those two words were used in the one sentence was in talking about the king's servants. Hi, I'm Bernie Diamond and welcome again to Fresh. Now let's take that one step further. The idea of a god being a servant, well, that was just downright crazy. The gods that the other nations served were false idols that they sought to appease so that their despotic wrath wouldn't come crashing down on them. Now, to be fair, the God of Israel did have a contract, a covenant it was called, with his people that basically went like this. If you honour me, I'll bless you. If you don't, I'll curse you. But even in the midst of that covenant, the idea of the servant king, the servant God, was right there front and centre. Writes King David, but you, Lord, protect me. You bring me honour, you give me hope. I will pray to the Lord and he will answer me from his holy mountain. I can lie down to rest and know that I'll wake up because the Lord covers and protects me. This God of Israel, the one true God, the one who would ultimately send his son Jesus to die for their sins and for ours, from the very beginning was the servant king the one who would protect his people, who'd bring them honour, who'd bring them hope, who'd answer them when they prayed, who'd give them rest. And listen to me, nothing's changed. God hasn't changed. You can rest and know that you'll wake up because the Lord covers you and he protects you. That's his word, fresh for you today. And yes, in fear, in trouble, in any circumstances, he will answer your prayers. In fact, the only sort of prayer the Bible teaches about is the sort that has powerful results. And we would absolutely love to pray with you into whatever need you might have. So stop by at PowerfulPrayer.org to share your prayer request so that we can pray with you. Again, that's PowerfulPrayer.org. <music> 